we're celebrating our 43rd anniversary. I was 43 years old when we organized. Wow. So I was 43, I'm 86, 43 and 43, 86. A lot, lot of things I thought of. So, and here's the crazy thing. I was gonna wait until 40, the 45th anniversary to do this. Okay. But it was just something about this year. Do it. It was, it was just something about this year that had me just wanting to do it this year. That's great. And it's, it's just, like I say, it's just been on me. I just, I just see such a need for us to know our history. That's it, why it's, it is good. It's I mean, good. it's been waking me up at night to waking me up early in the morning to like, you need to get this done. So. We were just talking about how things started. So how did things start for you all, you know, as far as like with Reverend Blanford, basically? For me, it started as a, um, a I was going into my sophomore year and I'd come home from college and Pastor Blanford was uh, at First Baptist Church and he was preaching the good news. So I was very excited about that because at the time I had attended Second Baptist Church in Bloomington. Mm -hmm. And out of that grew, he, he talked about the Good News uh, Bible and, and all of that, his teachings and his sermons just always showed that he loved the Lord. Even on first Sundays, we just got excited, you know, the way he would talk about the Lord, his relationship. And so as a young person, I wanted that relationship that he had. So it was contagious. Got you. So how did it start with you, Jerry? Well, I, I had come home from the service and Mar Joyce and I uh, started dating and uh, she was attending First Baptist. And so I wasn't a part of any church at the time. So I started attending with her. And uh, yeah, I liked Reverend Blanford. And so we had dated for a year or so and then we decided we had engaged and we were gonna get married. And uh, I started attending and uh, Pastor counseled us, I joined, and uh, shortly after that, he married us. And as I was saying earlier, uh, in October, we'll be married 50 years. And Pastor always said, he does a good job when he puts us together. <laughs> but, but yeah, and Reverend has been such an integral, integral part of my life. I mean, I still call him my pastor, even though he's in Arizona. But he's been a part of my life for over 50 years. All right, so let's get started. So I don't, I don't even know where to, I'm so honored. I don't even know where to begin. Let's start from, let's start from the beginning. Let's start from, um, uh, I guess we'll start from First Baptist because First Baptist is the, is kind of like the predecessor to Christ Baptist. I know you were in ministry a lot of years before, but in order to grow with Christ Baptist and a lot of the members that came over here with you, I guess we'll start with First Baptist. So tell us about it. Well, I was blessed to be pastor of uh, First Baptist in here for eight years. And uh, uh, we were having some uh, internal problems and we talked about them for a while and it came to a point where um, a number of people who were at uh, First Baptist uh, said that let's, let's form another church. And so um, when that happened, um, we contacted the pastor at uh, First, um, First Church of God, I think it's on Cone, Connecticut, and we asked about being able to use that, that church to, to have a meeting on Saturday morning. Saturday, um, August 1st, 1981. And that particular day, 167 people, I believe, showed up that day to organize. And um, the name was chosen, 
Um, and uh, I suggested the name, and the name was, a, was, was, was approved by the congregation. We also selected the initial 12 deacons and trustees. Um, they're all named, they're someplace, and they're in the book. And um, this was in 81, and on that Sunday, um, when we got through, one of the, the the people who was with us that day was a guest, and he was a he was uh, dating one of our members, uh, Lottie Ambrose, and they ended up getting married. Um, and he became the first member, new member, new member of Christ Baptist because after we organized and everything, he came forward and joined, and so uh, Vernon Ambrose became the first uh, a new member of. Uh, uh, of Christ Baptist. Um, the exciting thing that I think should be a part of the history is the fact that for 26 weeks, for 26 weeks, um, we we went to different churches, and um, we went and back out and invited to preach, and uh, the congregation, the people who are part of, uh, of Christ Baptist. Uh, they were with us. We took two offerings, one for the, for the host church, which was a blessing to them, because usually we had more folks than they had, and we took a very good offering for them. And it took a special offering for me for 26 weeks. Hello, my name is Sandra Dillon, and this is my husband. Larry Odell Dillon. 43 years ago, we were looking every Sunday to receive a phone call to find out where we were going to meet and have Reverend Blanford give this sermon. We were saying that we were in the wilderness at that time. Every Sunday we would meet at a different church. So, um, so tell me about the period between leaving First Baptist uh, that period of time between in the wilderness. Yeah, in which Miss <laughs> Dillon told Miss Dillon referred to as as in the wilderness, but it was to her it seemed like it was a good time. But tell me about that period. As I said, uh, every Sunday uh, we were invited someplace to, to, to preach. What you there was another church friendship, friendship, new friendship, something like that. It was a small church. Yeah. But Wednesday every, night. Wednesday night. Yeah. Wednesday every Wednesday, Wednesday night, night we were there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That was a part of it. So that was at First Baptist. So yes. how did the transition start? How did the whole transition go from First Baptist to the wilderness to Christ Baptist? Well, I can share that. We were in Bible study every Wednesday. And uh, I forgot the name they, that they call the Bible study, but every Wednesday I wanted to go and I would go with a few friends and my mother and some of her friends. We go to Bible study. And um, as a result, when uh, Pastor Blanford no longer was pastor there, we got, um, we wanted to stay together. Mr. Armstrong, Curtis Armstrong and his wife invited us to their home for Bible study there. And we got so excited. I know it was over 15 of us that had filled their living room. And um, Geraldine Coleman and her husband, Clifton Coleman, they um, talked with the pastor at Second Baptist Church, and he welcomed us. And so each Wednesday, we would go there and have Bible study. I think we went there for like nine consecutive weeks. And we grew. So like on Sundays, we got word wherever Pastor Blanford was invited to go to a minister, then we got in our cars and we were there uh, to minister, uh, well, to uh, worship along with pastors. So any evening services, any invitations, we would go. And it was, it was. Um, you would think that it would might be a, a sad situation being uh, almost homeless in a place, but there was an excitement about the very whole thing about what God was working out and working for us through it. So as we traveled from place to place, it was like, we had a good time. We did, yes. And, and it was a close fellowship. Yeah, yeah. And we got the nickname, the Church in the Wilderness, because we were wandering from place to place for, 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 for really for, for 26 weeks. 
and, and the Lord has blessed us to stay together and get fellowship. Uh, and, and when we met on uh, Wednesday nights, I um, guess what you at the church was friendship, a uh, new friendship. Um, there were about 60 people there usually. It was more people there, because usually the, the, the uh, Wednesday night Bible study and prayer time had only about 15, 20 people. But there were about 60 folks and they really enjoyed themselves. And a, um, a, a, a two offerings were taken there. One for the for, for our church and, 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 and one for even before we became a church. We had a, 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 we, we, there was a special offering and an account was open so that whatever we did, when we needed the money, we would have it. And also we took a special offering for the uh, host church, which was a tremendous blessing for them. Because I'm sure that what we gave them on Wednesday night was much more than what they brought in on Sunday morning. So we were blessed to, we were blessed and we were also blessed to be a blessing. So from the exodus from the other church uh -huh. and to, to the Bible study and everything growing. So how did we get to the, how do we get to um, in here? How do we get here? You know, for six months we were with, uh, going to different churches. And like, like my Joyce said, every Sunday we had an invitation from a different church. And so in the, in the meantime, we had people out looking for facility for us to worship in. I want to kind of go back to the, the point where it was time for you all and you all found this building. Like, yeah. how that was with the building, finding here, the process, and, okay. and getting in here. How did all of that transpire? Well, uh, we were looking, and somebody told us about this building that at that time was big. There had been a church, of, a church of God here, and we passed by and we said, no, at first of all, the windows were out. Oh, yeah, and we said, thanks, but no thanks. But then we decided we'd take a look, and then of course we get to get in the Church of God building. And of course the Church of God denomination owned. And so after coming and checking it out, we decided if the price is right, we can get the building and we can put the windows in and do the other stuff after we get in here. And so, uh, we talked with them. I don't recall what their asking price was originally, but I do know what we finally uh, offered them and they accepted. I believe it was 165000 for the, was 65000 No, it was 65000 Anyway, whatever it was, they accepted it. And um, we had some money in the bank because we were meeting on Wednesday nights. Two so offerings. Have, two offerings. There you go. <laughs> we have enough money in the bank to be able to able to uh, to uh, uh, give them a good down payment. Uh, we were able to go to a bank and pay because we were small and we were we were new. So no bank would look at us seriously. We get the bank, and of course he'll be riding with our attorney, and of course um, we were able to get all of that done. But this was the Church of God building that was empty, that, 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 that the, the church had died literally somewhere and, and, and the people, they moved away and the building was here and uh, if, if, if it had not been bought or utilized by somebody, it would have just collapsed too. Unfortunately, we heard about it and although we, 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 we said no at first because the windows were, were, were knocked out and it, it wasn't anything that was inviting to look at. We did check it out and then check with them what they wanted for the building. And somewhat uh, in the back of my mind, the figure 165 sticks out. That was something else. Okay. Okay, I won't bother that. Yeah. <laughs> and the Lord just blessed us that this used to be the Church of God. And their membership had dwindled so that they couldn't maintain the building. So they put it up for sale. And I think, uh, I don't know, was the Jones boys, I don't know, it was Frank or, or Carl, found out it was for sale. 
And so they came in, they looked around, they saw it, and they put a bid on it. And uh, we got it. And man, we were just in jubilation. And I can recall that uh, in November, when we got the building, we got the key, and we, and we came in. We all met on the front, front lawn of the church. And I can recall uh, 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 Kenneth Jones, Charles Jones, and Rodney Jones were playing horns, and they were blowing those horns when we marched into the church. And boy, you talk about the excitement. I mean, it was so high. I felt people were floating in through the doors because they were blowing those horns, and like we just, like the wall of Jericho, we, we, we were coming in, and, and the Holy Spirit, uh, God's presence was in the place, and uh, Pastor preached that sermon, and after the sermon, when he in, uh, extended the invitation to discipleship, people started walking down the aisle. And I never thought they'd stop walking and walking. I do believe I think there were 43 people that Sunday that came. We had that. People had to rush in and start taking the information to get their names and everything. And I tell you, that is one Sunday. The first Sunday we came in, I would never, ever forget because it was just so spirit filled. And with that many people coming in, and even Sundays after that, people were steadily coming in. You all get the offer. It is the first Sunday. You all are in the building. What happened? Can you explain to me like that day, like what you were feeling that day, what you saw that day? I saw some of the pictures. They're amazing. But can you explain what it was that day? I was on cloud nine. And, uh, I was still wearing a robe back in those days, and some of the pictures that you've got uh, show that. Um, and walking into the building, especially after seeing what the building looked like that Sunday, and what it looked like when we first saw it, people came in here and literally washed walls, washed windows. They did. I mean, they just. Did, did the, 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 the basic things that needed to be done to get this place ready. And so uh, that was a great, great experience. Not only the worship service was high, 43 new members that Sunday, but we also had um, dinner and fellowship downstairs in the current fellowship hall, go be in that building of the building again. The electricity in the oh, air, walking in here. So when oh, you asked me what that first service was like, it was like, I can't even describe it. I, I don't know what they sang. I don't even remember what they preached. <laughs> it was like I was just transported to some other place. And I just know it was, uh, uh, the air was just filled. The atmosphere was? The atmosphere was charged when we walked in here. It was like oh, a slice of heaven on earth. And may I point this out too? We organized with 165 people. They took over five thousand dollars special offering that day, and that was in 1981. <laughs> and uh, for the this was in November of '81, and the next 26 Sundays, some including the winter time people were joining. Even one Sunday, when most of the members couldn't get here, I had a handful of members, a person came in and joined. At the end of our first year, 444 people joined. In addition to the 165 that started, 400, now that, those are numbers I won't forget, 444 new members in 12 months. And because there was a need for the church in this community because there really wasn't one. And uh, the Lord praised pastor here, he was teaching it, people wanted to hear. And, and a lot of it was when people said, well, when you get a building, I'm going to come join you. And when we got the building, those people that said that, they came in. And that, and that time, you know, we began to fill this place up. We, we would fill this place up. The balcony would be full, the main floor would be full. And we had so many kids in the church. I mean, kids were everywhere. Of course, my George and I were young back then, and uh, I think Jarrell was three. He was, he was three. My son was three years old, and so we would do a whole choir stand up with kids and the kids choir. 
and so yeah, that's those are fond memories that you'll never forget. That was a high day, a, a super high day. Um, I can recall something that I can tell now, but I'm not gonna mention the name. One of our members uh, told me before, about a week or so before that first service, I want Mrs. Blanchard to have something new and special that Sunday to wear. And so she had Margaret to go shopping, get what she wanted, and she wanted to be something that was super nice. But what you see Margaret having on that day, that particular member uh, insisted that she buy that, and she got it. And she bought that for Margaret to be able to have, to be able to look as good as she looked at the She said, you're gonna have on a roll, but I want I want Sister Blanford to have on something that 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 is that is, that, that is very, very, very uh, eye-catching. And she did. Never will forget that. Wow, my earliest memory, um, when we walked through the doors of the church, I was 13 years old. Um, Back then, it was just, as a little girl, so many people. Um, and to walk into a new church, uh, praising God, was one of the greatest experiences I've had. Describe for me if you remember that day, like the day that you all, you all came in. Like, what was, what was going on that day? Like, in, in your, what you saw? <laughs> Well, of course, in the kids, I looking around at, you know, all the adults praising God, you know, thanking God for being, you know, in a new church home. It was just exciting times. And, you know, now as I'm older, I understood what all the excitement was about back then. You know, as a child growing up, you know, but you don't really know. But as you get older and learn more, you learn a whole lot and the whole purpose of us moving forward into a new church, new church home. Every Sunday we would meet at a different church. And finally, on the first, I got the call saying that we were gonna to meet to start our new church and we were gonna call it Christ Baptist. And I said, well, we are in agreement with you, whatever you wanted to do, uh, because we were looking forward to uh, starting the Christ Baptist Church. I was on my way to the hospital though uh, to have my third child. Now he's 43. Every time I think about the church on his birthday, starting on August 1st, I think about him. And my husband, what were you doing, honey? Take care of the rest of the kids. <laughs> okay, so that's all I can give, uh, telling you about back then, because I was laid up for having a C-section. I was laid up for four weeks, and uh, but when I was able to get out, we were happy that uh, we were able to come to our new edifice here uh, at 4700 West 7th Avenue, and uh, we were just glad to be a part of the new Christ Baptist Church. And we're thankful to God that we are here 43 day, years later to uh, give our testimony. I know uh, when I first came here, a lot of the church was like built on, it, it's, it's been the people. It's been just the relationships of the people. It's just like a family. You know, we, we might not all agree, but we all love each other. You know, what would you, 30 years from now, people see this video. What would you want, what do you want the long lasting impression of Christ Baptist to be as seeing it from then and just seeing things now? 30 years from now, I would still like to see the love. I feel that this is a loving church. We have a loving, uh, a loving congregation. Our congregation has been uh, supportive of every family that's been a part of Christ Baptist. And I just wish that love will continue and just grow to where God wants it to be. All he wants us to do is love and help and for our church to continue to do that. So um, 
anything you want to just say I, we're well the church is celebrating 43 years this year of this is the 43rd anniversary and you all you can talk to just about anybody any, everybody will tell you including Reverend Blanford himself that you all were intricate parts of this church you know opening and growing so any wise words of wisdom or well wishes for Christ Baptist as they as you know celebrate 43 years this year you know when we came in we had some leaders who were, who, who were older than us, the, the original board and they, they were men who stood by the pastor and and, and, and led us and, and they and they, they've gone on to glory and then another generation has come in behind them myself and others and many of us have gone, many of them have gone on the glory. So now there's another generation coming in. And so we just have to uh, stay rooted and stay grounded in God's word and uh, continue to uh, trust in the Lord with all that heart and not to our own understanding. In all that way that we acknowledge Him, He will direct our path. That's His word. And God's word is true. I wanted to add, I love the purpose and principles that were set uh, that was set here. And those eight principles, they guided us and we all had to know it. And then those of us who taught children's church, Sunday school, whatever, we had to teach that. And so the kids always thought of part of a pastor taught us to involve the children and let them know about worship what parts of the service or whatever, even uh, the communion table, to respect the communion table and what it meant. They did not lean on the table, but the way he did it was always in love. The way he talked to us, I mean, he didn't raise his voice or anything like that, but it was always guided by those purpose and principles that we focus on. It. And it made it simple and plain and I know it says something to seek, find, and do the will of God. And when you get that in your heart, that that's what you want to do, it's that synergy and working together. We wanted to work together. Uh, our groups were uh, if our birthday months. If I was, uh, my birthday is in June. So all of us, all of the elders and the children in June, we met together, we were fellowship, we were friends, we were, I mean, it was, we were family. family. We had real community and love. And if, I mean, I mean Mama Jones could correct my uh, children or any anyone that was part of, they could uh, speak to them and it was no problem, they would straighten up, you know? And it's like, um, I don't know, they just loved it. Children just came, loved him. I do have to add this story. One, one time during Bible vacation, Bible school, Pastor Blanford was getting out of his car and all these kids flocked to him, was flocking to him and we were trying to keep the kids together. And I was saying, who, who is this person? I mean, could it be, you know, I'm always trying to be funny. I said, could it be Jesus? <laughs> and when I looked and he had his sunglasses, so it was Pastor Blanford. It was his relationship with the children. And they felt like oh, so warm, like this was their pastor. They felt like they, he could speak to them and he talked to them and just, they just went along like buddies or friends, real friendship. So that was the kind of thing I would say for Christ Baptist, continuing love, agape love, embrace one another, um, just, do the will of the Lord, and you'll continue to grow and be all that God will have you to be. <laughs> so, can I ask, um, what would, you know, we've, we've had a lot of changes since oh, yeah. you retired. We've had, you know, it, it's, it's part of history, right? Yeah. We've had a split. That's right. We've had... Members go on to glory. We've had some of the, the, the very same people, the deacons that help you walk in here, they've gone on to glory. Messages and, and meaning and everything get lost. What would you like, what is your hope? This is your baby. Christ Baptist is your baby. So what is your hope and desire 
for Christ Baptist towards the future? If you had something to say to Christ Baptist to kind of propel them to move forward, what would your message to Christ Baptist be? I would, I would hope and pray that we could go back to basics. What we started off with, the basics of being the kind of church locally that the Lord wants us to be. To have ministries that would be to help people to grow and to be involved in a ministry. You cannot really grow to your potential as a Christian unless you're engaged in a ministry. And your ministry may be different from yours, and, and but all of us, God expects us to be engaged in a ministry. He has gifted every believer to be able to be effective in at least one ministry. And my hope and prayer would be that, we, that every member would find that, that ministry engage in it and would be uh, able to grow in it and would be able to be a blessing to others and that we would get back to our original where we're not we're not satisfied with just having local ministries but to realize that the great commission has been around 2,000 years and God expects us to go beyond the four walls of the church. He expects every church to go beyond its four walls and to go beyond its city, to go beyond its state, to go beyond its nation, and to have a ministry that is global, to do something for people in another culture or in other cultures that will glorify God and by His church and advance His kingdom. That's my hope and prayer. And that's my hope and prayer for churches everywhere. And I have been, one of the things that I have had a burden for for, for many years is the fact that I have seen what happens and doesn't happen in churches across racial and denominational lines all of my life. I'm 86 years young now. I've been around a while and I have been very concerned about what most churches are not doing. Uh, I uh, saw a sign uh, at uh, Bishop in San Francisco, soon after uh, we moved from San Francisco, that, that shocked me. Mark and I were going back for a visit. And walking down the, uh, walking down the uh, street there, Bishop was walking, which we love to do every time we were in San Francisco. Looked in the window, and San Francisco was not known as a, as a religious town. If I, I, I think, at best, when I was there, 20% of the people considered themselves that was the best. So it's not a religious time. Walking down the fisherman's wharf, looked in this window, see a great big sign that says, Jesus is coming back for his church. I said, at fisherman's wharf? I had to stop. And there was a little smaller sign underneath it. I had to get up close to see. This is in big letters. Jesus Christ is coming back for his church. And that was a smaller sign that said, and is he pissed? Now, if Jesus would come back for his church today, he would be super upset about what he does not see in the vast majority of churches. He's coming back. He's not coming back to do what some people think. When you come back to the church, the church is going to be in judgment because you did not do what I told you to do. And that has been my concern for, for, for almost all of my life. Uh, I was called to the ministry when, when I was 16, 70 years ago. I said, no thanks. I accepted my call two years later. And one of my burdens have been, as I read the Bible and see what churches are and to see the difference between what the church is, the Bible said the church should be I and part of it. I'm that. And that goes across racial and denominational lines. Most churches have no ministry that goes outside of its boundaries. And Jesus had said the Great Commission is to go into all the world. I didn't say it, he said it. That's the mission to this church. And only a handful of churches are doing that. So when Jesus comes back for his church, he's going to be.
pissed. Okay, that's just that's just sad the message. Can we What's my hope for 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 Christ's baptism? As we celebrate this anniversary, as we remember the past, I hope that you will never forget your past. Mm -hmm. I hope that you will rekindle the joy yes. and the excitement of that yes. past. But I hope that your focus would be on the future. Yes. The message is the same. The method might change. Might change. This is a new generation. Yeah. But don't forget that the message is the same. same. And as you change the method, don't let the method change the message. Amen. That's my message. I did my letter of preach that day. Like a moving tide. Mm, yeah. I pack my things and start running. Yes, I can.